We need a corruption-free public sector to achieve this transformation. Corruption and corruptive tendencies are not part of Nigeria's values, President Buhari insists as he unveils national ethics and integrity policy. ECOWAS Special Envoy to Mali meets President Buhari. Regional leaders may meet to iron out grey areas on political situation in that country. Our togetherness is inherited from the major cultural streams and is reflected in the diversity of styles. Nigeria at 60, Information and Culture Minister opens historical art exhibition. Plus, preparations for Ondo election continues with Inspector General of Police meeting CSOs. A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on the Network News on the NTA. We are live in Abuja. My name is Kene Ima Abodike. Michael Olaleye will be reading from Lagos. There are strong indications that the heads of state and governments of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS are to reconvene for further discussions on outstanding grey areas regarding the political situation in Mali. President Mohamed Buhari dropped this hint while exchanging views with the ECOWAS Special Envoy to the West African Nation, former President Goodluck Jonathan. State House correspondent and Musambo has details. Former President Gulag Jonathan, who is the ECOWAS Special Envoy and Head of Mediation Mission to Mali, was in the State House to brief President Muhammadu Buhari on the current situation in the West African country. He said after the military takeover, Mali has now appointed a civilian as interim president who will stay in office for 18 months and lead the country back to constitutional order. The action was part of irreducible demands by West African leaders before sanctions imposed on the country could be lifted. Dr. Jonathan, however, said the military leaders are yet to satisfy ECOWAS' demand of a full civilian as vice president and what his rules would be in government. That position is currently being held by a serving military officer who was also one of those that truncated democratic governance in Mali. President Mohamed Buhari counseled the special envoy to present a formal report to the new ECOWAS chairman, President Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana. The Ghanaian leader, he explained, will then write to them officially so that the next line of action would be determined. The president maintained that with about two-thirds of Mali currently under occupation by terrorists, the priority of the military should be to secure their country rather than hold on to power. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The National Ethics and Integrity Policy aimed at enhancing good and ethical conduct of the Nigerian citizenry has been unveiled by President Muhammad Buhari, performing the ceremony during the second national summit on diminishing corruption in the public sector. The president described corruption and corruptive tendencies as abhorrent to the nation's core ethical values. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo again reports that the event was organized by the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation in collaboration with the ICPC as part of Nigeria's Diamond Jubilee celebration. The National Ethics and Integrity Policy already approved by the Federal Executive Council is part of government's aspiration towards rediscovering Nigeria's cherished traditional ethical values, amongst them honesty, integrity, hard work, truth and justice, unity, faith, as well as consideration for one another, irrespective of status or background. As I have often reminded Nigerians, if we do not kill corruption, corruption will kill Nigeria. For the government to deliver the expectations of the governed, President Muhammad Buhari said the society must be transformed from one in which impunity in the management of national resources is the norm to one in which culture of accountability and transparency prevails. We need to deploy resources to address our common needs rather than the greed of careless few. We need a corruption-free public sector to achieve this transformation. We need a judicial system that dispenses justice without undue delay and technicality. 
And finally, we need ethical reorientation of the people to achieve this goal. When we work together against corruption, we can defeat it. The president said it is only when the three arms and levels of government work together that the country will be effectively served and the positive impact of the service delivery reach all and sundry. We must all join hands together to fight corruption and return to our traditional values of honesty and integrity. I urge all Nigerians participating in this summit to come up with recommendations on ways to further enforce our laws and prevent corruption in the public sector in Nigeria. Together Against Corruption is the theme of the summit and this was the central focus of the goodwill messages delivered by invited guests. As the theme of the summit suggests, we need to work together as Nigerians, as arms and institutions of government to roll back corruption in our country. I believe that we can achieve our targets with a united front. The judiciary is ever poised to deploy every relevant legal tool at its disposal to whittle down the strength of corruption in our mindset. I today witness firsthand the commitment of the government of Nigeria under President Muhammadu Buhari to fight corruption. The level of transparency I've had today here is unequivocal. The United Nations will remain an important partner in Nigeria's commitment to fight corruption and achieve sustainable development goals. During the event, Hamza Adamu Buwai of the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment and CSP Francis Osage Ehobo of the Nigeria Police received Public Service Integrity Awards, while three youngsters, Opeemi Peter Adeboe, Chikeze Fevo, and Matilda Daniels, who won anti-corruption music and essay competitions, got recognized and rewarded. COVID-19 kills but corruption kills even more. ICPC alone cannot fight corruption. We all must be involved. Your Excellency, sir, your unequivocal stand against corruption is a moral booster to the fight against corruption. We assure you, sir, that as your foot soldiers, we will not allow corruption to kill Nigeria. The ICPC chairman said the commission recovered billions of naira and substantial assets from those who abuse trust, including 2.6 billion naira meant for the school feeding program during the coronavirus lockdown. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. For countries to achieve the 2030 agenda, the international community must pay close attention to the nexus between the illicit financial flows and the inability of most developing countries to mobilize enough domestic resources to finance their development priorities. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo stated this at the launch of a United Nations Economic Development in Africa report on tackling illicit financial flows for sustainable development in Africa. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Nigeria has continued to lose so much. Leading the call for an effective global action against illicit financial flows and related vices negatively impacting progress in developing countries, especially in Africa. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo calls for an overhaul of the international tax system. I encourage all leaders whose countries are considered absolute outliers for illicit financial flows to join forces and take the responsibility of combating the scourge by insisting on the repatriation of, of illicit funds and their proceeds. Let me also avail myself of this opportunity to call on leaders whose countries are the main destinations for illicit financial flows to take concrete steps to prevent and stop the receipt of illicit funds into their countries and to assist in freezing, seizing, and returning such funds and its proceeds already in their countries. The Vice President stresses the need for cooperation and synergy among the private sector, civil society, trade unions, and professional groups to work with governments in tackling illicit financial flows. Therefore, I am confident that tackling illicit financial flows would assist African countries with much needed development finance as well as prevent the exploitation and abuse of financial systems on the continent through criminal activities. The publication launched by the United Nations Conference 
on trade and development, on the impact of illicit financial flows on development in Africa, is designed to broaden the awareness of the scale, scope, and cost of illicit financial flows. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NJ News. And as part of activities lined up to celebrate Nigeria at 60, a historical arts exhibition got underway in Abuja, the nation's capital city. Anthony Fawson reports. Exhibition under the auspices of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture is titled Nigeria, a country of colors. It is an opportunity for the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture to showcase the best of Nigeria's cultural heritage to the world and highlight the oneness of Nigerians in the area of traditional dresses, music and musical instruments, visual arts and paintings. There are also beads, textiles, poultry and hairdo, which are the features of our expressions of life in Nigeria. Information and Culture Minister Lion Mohammed, who declared the exhibition open, said the exhibition serves as a mirror of the society, depicting our way of life, realities, dreams and vision for the future. Pointing out that art functions as a medium of interpreting society and the characteristics of the people's way of life, noting that art has remained a constant appeal, hence the theme for the 60th anniversary celebration, Together. Our togetherness is inherited from the major cultural streams and is reflected in the diversity of styles. I'm glad to note that our artists are not mere imitators, rather they work from intimate understanding, knowledge and experience of local life, which they are part of. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, Deaconess Grace Isugekwe, said the exhibition was put up to inject creativity into the celebration. It is aimed at strengthening and deepening the understanding of our unity and diversity, as well as the socio-economic era prevalent from 1960 to date. The exhibition is open to the general public. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. 23 federal ministries have developed a joint roadmap of workable strategies towards actualizing President Muhammad Buhari's vision of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within 10 years. Betari Ben reports that the Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs is coordinating the Presidential Poverty Reduction Initiative. This roadmap for the Presidential Poverty Reduction Initiative was developed by an interministerial technical committee of experts. It seeks to harness multi-sectoral opportunities for women and youth empowerment as well as poverty alleviation along all economic corridors nationwide towards lifting millions of Nigerians out of poverty. It has a ray of hope for all of us so that to a in industry and long economic corridors, you know where you are going to put these uh, industries. If we want to get it right in empowering or flushing out poverty in this country, women must be in the center stage. It's a very, very important thing that we must focus on and ensure that at the end of the day, it's the people that own this progress. The government should just be a catalyst. Because every single minister, there is something there that we can do in a related development, the ministries of special duties, transportation and agriculture engaged key players to fine-tune modalities for the distribution of 2,000 buses to various farmers' cooperative groups to cushion the effect of COVID-19 and other variables on food security. One of the focal agenda of the government is to bring about faster, inclusive and sustainable economic growth and to make sure that the benefits of growth spread to the rural communities. The initiatives put together are expected to bring soccer to Nigerians, especially at the grassroots. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikwen, NTA News.
Now, President Muhammad Buhari is delighted that the bond of friendship between Nigeria and the People's Republic of China has continued to strengthen. The president, in a letter of felicitation with President Xi Jinping on the occasion of the 71st anniversary of the proclamation of the Republic of China on the country's National Day, said though the COVID-19 pandemic has caused disruptions in the economies of the world, it however gladdens his heart that despite this, our two countries have remained steadfast and supported each other. President Buhari appreciated the government of China for being supportive of the infrastructural revolution of Nigeria. You're watching the network news on the NTA. Time for our first commercial break. Do stay with us. Welcome back as we go to the National Assembly, where the leadership has reaffirmed its resolve to work with the executive arm of government in consideration of the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020. The two presiding officers of the National Assembly made this known at a meeting between the legislators and the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Prey Silver, and the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Melek Yari, on the focus and aims of the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020. This interaction, therefore, is for us to have a feel of what it is in that deal. Try to make us understand everything that we need to understand. It's easier for everyone if we understand it, because it will take us less time to deal with it. If we don't, we are not going to pass it until we understand it. Because this is a very crucial and critical bill for us in this country. We will pass this bill speedily. However, with a caveat, its passage will not be, we will not sacrifice thoroughness. One of the central things that we should have in mind while considering the PRD is to make Nigeria an attractive investment destination. The minister also said in the new petroleum industry bill, NMPC is to be commercialized, not scrapped. And still on the National Assembly, the Senate says when it reconvenes on Tuesday, 29th of September 2020, the approval of the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper will be its immediate preoccupation. Correspondent Ignatius Mpo reports that legislators reaffirmed their commitment to pass the 2021 budget before the end of this year. The report on the medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper that was scrutinized by the Senate Joint Committee on Finance and National Planning will be tabled at plenary for consideration. The Committee on Finance will do the presentation, the Senate will consider the presentation and uh, take its decision. The, the, the 2021 budget, which we believe Mr. President will present in, we will do everything within our powers to maintain the budget cycle you know, from January to December. The Senate is expected to commence legislative works on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill with March 2021 as target period for passage. The Petroleum Industry Bill and the Constitutional Review will also be set in motion. Lami Ali completes the story from the House of Representatives. Thank you, Ignatius. Resumption of plenary for members of the House of Representatives after the annual recess is going to be a totally new experience as the Green Chamber has gone digital. By this development, proceedings as the House will henceforth be paperless as all that are required such as order paper, votes and proceedings, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and other information can be accessed by members through the computers. Nigerians have always clamored for accuracy in our voting system. Nigerians want to track our pattern of voting on every national issue. I have taken enough time with the mandate of the Speaker and the leadership of the House of Representatives to interface and engage with various committee leadership to see how we can bring a stop to some of these unusual things happening in the course of conduct of investigations or probe activities. We don't have to fight with the executive, just like we don't have to be their rubber stamp. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. 
Turning to security matters now, comparatively, the outing in Ondo State will be better than that of the Edo governorship election because more lessons have been learned. This is coming from the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, as he plays host to the convener of Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room and other representatives of civil society organizations in Abuja. Francis Fum reports. We're happy to say that our observation... Thank you for a job well done in Edo State. This was the main contents of the visits by the Civil Society Situation Room at the force headquarters barely a few days after the election because the group had a good partnership with the police ahead of the election. Still basking in the euphoria of the victory of the just-concluded governorship election, the CSOs are having some close talks with the police chief for more successes in Ondo. So we're hoping that looking at Ondo, the professionalism that the police brought to bear in Edo will manifest even much more in Ondo, that we do have a deployment of police personnel who are as well trained as those deployed in Edo. For the IGP, the partnership with INEC and others is even getting tighter. We're, going to meet, we're again going to meet with INEC and strategize so that if there were some lapses in Edo, we'll make sure that those lapses don't occur in Ondo. So hopefully the election in Ondo will be better than uh, Edo. They are not in charge of the guns nor the ballot boxes. But talking to the people on value reorientation yeah. is their offering, the CSOs promised. In Abuja, Franks is from NTN News. The Directorate of Defense Media Operations says the Air Task Force of Operation Lafayette Dole has eliminated several terrorists and destroyed their structures, including logistics facilities at Arena World J, Warashali, and Valangider in Borono State. In a statement by Coordinator Major General John Eninche, the airstrikes were executed on the 26th of September 2020 under ongoing subsidiary operation Hailstorm 2, following a credible human intelligence report as well as confirmatory surveillance and reconnaissance missions indicating a resurgence of terrorist activities at the three locations at Arena Wurje, a Marathi local government area where Islamic State of West Africa province ASWAP elements were confirmed to be hibernating. The identified targets were attacked by Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships, resulting in the destruction of some structures and the neutralization of several terrorists with similar results at Warashali and Valangide in the Sampisa Forest area. As part of the ongoing resettlement drive, Borono State Government has returned internally displaced persons from Baga Town to their regional communities almost two years after their displacement. Governor Baba Ganal Omar Azulum, who spent three days in Baga, personally supervised resettlement of residents who have voluntarily chosen to return home. Mohamed Goni tells us more. Resettlement of Baga in Kukawa local government area is strategic to the Borno state government because of its economic importance being the largest fish market in the sub-region. On the first day in Baga town, Professor Bagana Umara performed his Juma prayer there, the first in nearly two years. Preparatory to return of the IDFs, Governor Bagana Umara inspected public structures and facilities including water points, health care centers, residents of the district head, schools, police station, among others. We have achieved the minimum threshold required to resettle uh, the Baga community under uh, the PS1 of the relocation exercise. The first batch of 521 households were resettled with each male and female returnee given a bag of rice, maize flour, cooking oil, as well as 10,000 naira, while the women were also given fabric. The returnees were full of gratitude not only for returning home, but also for the gesture accorded them. In Mungunu, Professor Bagana Omar urged IDFs anxiously waiting for evacuation to be patient as no one will be left behind. Mahmoud Goni, NT News. Meanwhile, Borono State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum has expressed concern over the killing of security operatives and other citizens following attack on his convoy along Mongono Baga Road last Friday. Again, Mohamed Goni reports. Governor Babagana Umara, who described the demise of the security operatives as a monumental loss, said Borono shares the grief of the very families and forever remains grateful to them for their sacrifices. 
praying Allah to forgive their souls and speedy recovery for the injured. We can be responsible for their medical expenses while for the families of the deceased, government will look into the possibility of supporting them, supporting their kids and kind, especially their children, so that they can further their education. But the most important thing is that we shouldn't be deterred because of what has happened. Resettlement is not easy. Although Nigeria is not a party to the Kampala Convention, uh, we shall do everything possible to adhere to the Kampala Declaration. The governor believes that the only way to stop fresh recruitment by the insurgents is to allow displaced citizens to return to their means of livelihood. From Baga in Mkukawa local government, Mohamed Gwani, NTA News. The organized labor has suspended its planned industrial action of a hike in pump price and electricity tariff after an offer of some palliatives by the federal government to cushion the effects of the increases. The suspension of the strike was reached in Abuja after an exhaustive negotiation between the federal government and labor, which led to the signing of a communique by both parties. all issues cannot be resolved at once and this understanding is to have a plan on how those issues shall be finally resolved in the future majorly on the issue of uh, increasing PMS price and increasing electricity tariff we have discussed the issue of the state of our refineries with timeline on how to achieve uh, sustainable refining and uh, therefore to divert uh, our policy option from the issue of solely importing. The federal government to make available to organized labor 133 number CNG LPG driven mass transit buses immediately and provide to the major cities across the country on a scale on the basis thereafter to all states and local government before, 20, before December 2021. Both parties agreed to set up a technical committee which will work for duration of two weeks to examine the justifications for the new policy in view of the need for the validation of the basis for the new cost reflective tariff as a result of the conflicting information from the fields which appeared different for the data presented to justify the new policy by NERC. The Old Progressives Congress has commended the shelving of the nationwide strike. The party, in a statement by its Deputy National Publicity Secretary Yekidi Nabena, says the gesture is a positive development in line with the proven pro people stance of President Muhammad Buhari led APC administration, which has always put the welfare and interest of the masses first in policy decisions and implementations. The APC called on all well-meaning Nigerians and stakeholders to cooperate, partner and monitor the implementation of these commitments and agreements reached by the federal government and organized labor and commended President Buhari's transmission of the much-awaited Petroleum Industry Bill 2020 to the National Assembly. Now to the judiciary, where an FCT High Court has ordered Adamawa Senator Elisha Abo to pay 50 million naira as compensation to Osimibria Warmate, a lady he assaulted in 2019. The civil judgment is coming in weeks after a magistrate court in Zubar, Abuja, acquitted the Adamawa North lawmaker of charges of assault instituted against him by the police. Justice Samira Bature found the senator guilty and ordered him to pay compensation to the plaintiff. Meanwhile, the Minister of Women Affairs, Paul Taling, has commended the Nigerian judiciary for sentencing Senator Elisha Abo, representing Adamawa North Central Senatorial District, for assaulting Ms. Osimibria Warmate in 2019. The minister in a press statement said the judgment will serve as a deterrent to other male chauvinists be they in high or low places, who take pleasure in harassing and maltreating women. It reiterated the determination of all stakeholders to checkmate all incidences of gender-based violence. 
The minister concluded that there is no more safe haven for rapists, lady tormentors and other gender-based violators in Nigeria. Now, Michael Olaleye in Lagos brings us more reports from that centre. Hello, Michael. Hello, Kene. Harnessing the potential inherent in the nation's public service training institutions by government is imperative if the country's public workforce is to be enhanced. This recommendation was made by representatives of the House Committee on Public Matters and Establishment during an oversight visit to the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, Askan, to Po Badagri and Lagos, to the Psyche reports. Globally, the public service is the engine room for the implementation of all government's policies and programs. To enhance productivity, training institutions pass on requisite knowledge and skills to public officers for improved efficiency. The Administrative Staff College of Nigeria and ASCON is equipped for this onerous task. The visit by the House of Representatives Committee on Public Matters and Establishments is to assess operations at the college. The committee chairman, Sani Bala, and other members taught facilities on ground including the powerhouse, water treatment plants, some abandoned 60 rooms of the International Students Hostel, CBN Intervention Hostel, and lecture theatres, as well as residential quarters. The chairman of the committee enjoyed ministries, departments, and parastatas to utilize the training opportunities offered by ASCON in order to improve output of government's organizations. I hope after the post-COVID issue, the institution will have to come with so many ways, so many programs to aim at ensuring that the internally generated revenue is improved. The Director General of the College, Cecilia Gaia, had earlier outlined some of the challenges the college is hoping to surmount. ASCOM will continue its efforts by working with Office of the Head of Service of the uh, Civil Service of the Federation, the Committee on Public Service Matters of the House of Representatives, and all levels of government in the country to ensure that its activities add value to capacity building and revenue generation. Members of the committee also promised to liaise with the Works and Appropriations Committee of the House for the rehabilitation of the route that connect ASCOM. Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Now to security. The Nigerian Navy has reiterated its combat readiness against all forms of illegal activities on the nation's territorial water. Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command Rear Admiral Oladili Daji gave this assurance during the second biannual inspection tour of the command. Imoli Ayotokide has details. <laughs> This simulation exercise, known as the Vessel Body Search and Seizure, is a clear indication of the preparedness of the Navy to fight crimes on the waterways. The gunnery exercise, launching and recovering of boats, high-speed fleet maneuvers, were among the exercises conducted to assess the level of operational readiness, efficiency, and state of ships, units, and establishments in the command. We'll keep working at where we have um, uh, noticed some deficiencies and make sure that the fleet and the shore establishments are ship ship uh, to ensure that the mandate of each um, establishment is fulfilled. NNS Prosperity, Ekun, Nguru, Ikulu, Ose, alongside two tugboats, participated for the sea inspection. The FOC also visited other administrative and operational bases under its command. In Lagos, Imoliayo Tukidi, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports with Kenne shortly after this break. Please stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. The federal government, through the National Bureau of Statistics, in collaboration with the World Bank, is conducting a census of businesses across the country with a view to providing a comprehensive list of all businesses in Nigeria towards providing the country with comprehensive data about the economy. The national survey was flagged off by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Budget and National Planning, Olushola Idowu in Abuja, with a training of data collectors from across the country. Buplang Dakou reports. 
experts here agree that adequate data is needed to bridge the gap of inadequacies in proper planning, policy making, and development of businesses for any country. It is to this end that the National Bureau of Statistics brought together data collectors from across the country to train them for a survey known as the National Business Sample Census, which will serve as a benchmark for updates on subsequent commercial and industrial sector statistics. To address the government situation in the country, there must be reliable and timely indicators on major sectors of the economy. Statistician General of the Federation, Yemi Kale, says at the end of the survey, Nigeria can boast of having data towards complementing the actualization of government's desire to improve MSMEs and reduce poverty. That's when policymakers know where all these businesses are, um, what their primary activities are and their challenges, that's when they can take decisions to support them. The results of the survey will help government to come up with appropriate policies since such a survey has not been conducted in the country in the last two decades. Muplan Dakok, NTA News. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, has reaffirmed its commitment to partnering with other organizations and carrying out its social responsibility of informing, educating, and enlightening the public on matters of public concern. The Director General of the NTA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, stated this while playing host to the National Coordinator and Chief Executive Officer of the New Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, and African Peer Review Mechanism, and other the members. Alika Obanaji Arua reports. The National Coordinator and CEO, Alda Nepad, Princess Gloria Akobondu, is seeking partnership with NTA in keeping the public abreast of government services, especially the ongoing review process for smallholder farmers program by the agency. If you look at almost 80 to 90 percent of our farmers are their community dwellers, and if we can engage them effectively and uh, support them, give them the capacity building, the training, and uh, probably start a park and engage them in collaboration with the state governors and the local government, I think the zero hunger policy African Union talks about would be a turn of the past in Nigeria. The Director General of the NTA says the NTA is ready to go the extra mile to ensure the goal and objectives of the organization are promoted. You have to come with a shopping list. These are the things you want. We we'll take a look at uh, your shopping list and uh, we will tell you what we can do for you. Talk about the path, talk about your challenges, talk about what the path stands for, what you want done, what you want from NTA, what you want from other organizations. Nepal's primary objective is to eradicate poverty, promote sustainable growth and development, as well as empower women, among other goals. In Abuja, Alika Okwanachi, Arua, NC News. Adequate funding of family planning to aid availability and accessibility of contraceptives is described as best approach to control high population density in Nigeria. This was the submission of CSOs in partnership for advocacy in child and family health to mark this year's World Contraception Day. Ngozi Silva Technicio tells us more. Of World Contraception Day in 2007 is with the objective of creating global awareness for people of reproductive age to be well informed of contraceptive options with regards to their sexual reproductive health, the availability of contraception for Nigerians, especially women, would be a matter of choice and never unwanted pregnancies. However, lack of funds due to non-release or late release of budgetary allocations by federal and state governments to facilitate family planning has been a setback in making the birth control options available to willing Nigerians. Hence, the reason for this report assessment meeting. We are committed to improving child and family health in Nigeria. We believe that access to modern contraceptives gives families a chance to practice healthy timing between births, reduces the risk to the mother, contributes to the survival of living children and the health of the nation. The release, timely release, and the complete release of whatever has been budgeted so that 
all the programs that are lined up can be can be followed to the letter. A lot of women don't want, they want to have this family planning, but they don't want to go to the clinics. They don't want their husbands to know that they, they are doing family planning. Irrespective of the devastating effects of COVID-19 on the nation's economy, the coalition of these civil society organizations expressed their readiness to step up advocacy and sensitization in the hinterland on the essence of contraception as improved child and family health in Nigeria is the watchword. In Abuja, Ngozi Silva Technical, NTA News. We have one more lap of commercial break on the news. We will be back shortly. Nigeria at 60 and a journey to nationhood. What are the developmental strides, economic and socio-political growth? All these on Tuesday Alive this week as Nigeria marks 60 years of independence. Tuesday Alive and Nigeria's milestones. It is going to be incisive and educative. Join us on Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Don't miss it. Nigeria School Sports Federation to support the National Principals Camp initiated by the Ministry of Sports and the Diary. Olubide Heguntola has this and more on sports update. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukuburatai has joined notable members of the global community to lord the modest achievements recorded by national basketball teams under the watch of the President of the Nigeria Basketball Federation, Amadou Musakida, as he retires from active service to concentrate fully on basketball. He described Kida as an achiever and philanthropist as shown in the result of the Tigers and the Tigresses qualifying for the Olympics. Musa Kida is a kind gentleman, hardworking, very industrious and a philanthropist by excellence. He is jovial, friendly and always willing to assist the less privileged. It touches on those cardinal principles of, um, of what my federation is all about. Um, so yes, I'm the president, but I have a board that is very, very committed to the development of uh, basketball in the country. So um, uh, together we work as a very uh, excellent team. In another development, the President's Nigeria School Sports Federation, B.C. Joseph, has advocated active participation of youth in school sports, as this is a sure way to raise a tutu student. Participate in school sports, and we are building character, we are building the children to be able to meet whatever challenges they will face in the future. And from Udomasho, the stage is now set for the 2020 Udomasho Land Marathon, scheduled for the 28th of November 2020. The race, which was earlier slated for May, but postponed due to coronavirus pandemic, has been endorsed by the showroom of Udomasho Land, Obaladun Ni Uyewumi. The event has been able to attract all the youth across the Bumas as well. And of course, we've seen them in their large numbers coming to register. Marathon race all over the globe changes people because it keeps your health. According to organizers, the race is meant to discover new talents and promote sports development. With sports update, Olum De Guntola, NT News. And a quick check on weather for Tuesday. You are welcome. Tuesday is expected to be cloudy to mostly cloudy skies to the northwest and the southwest. The stretch of the inland cities as well as the central region. However, we expect some late night weather systems to linger into the early hours of Tuesday to give some thunderstorms over parts of Kanu, Adamawa, Jalingo, parts of Gombe, Bauchi, with slim prospect of rains over Abuja and Nasarawa, while parts of Kalaba and Eket should expect a few thunderstorms. It should be a wet afternoon for most parts of the country, though it may not be so intense over some areas. However, our projection shows possibilities of a busy afternoon. Let's see how this plays out with the temperature forecast. I am Akami Samara. Thanks for watching.
would like to thank you for being part of NTA Network News tonight. My name is Kene Ima Abodike. Do have a good night.